Good afternoon, gentlemen, the panelists and the attendees at today's webinar, which is the first webinar on road safety education during formative years. Uh, uh, we already have the panelists in place. I have a few messages for the attendees. Uh, one is, please, the, your audio and video are always muted. For the attendees, the audio and video is always muted. Uh, attendees can forward their uh, queries through the Q&A session, which is at the bottom of the screen. And the panelists will respond to the Q&A session at the end of the webinar, this is the last item in today's webinar. As per schedule, it is scheduled at 5.30. But let's see how it goes. We'll try to keep to the schedule. Uh, with this, we would like to uh, start today's uh, webinar. And I would like to invite the president IRF, Mr. Satish Parak, to give his uh, welcome address. Over to Mr. Satish Parak, please. Good afternoon, everyone. A special guest from the Ministry of Road Transport and Highway, Director of Road Safety, Mr. Gari Gaurav Hariram Gupta, Gaurav Hariram Gupta, President Emeritus IRF KK Kapila Sir, Executive Director CM Mr. Prashant Banerjee, and the panelists, Dr. Prajapati Sivati, Mr. Akhilesh Srivastav, and Dr. PK Sarkar. Mr. N. Bal Subramanian, my colleagues from IRF, members of media, ladies and gentlemen. Namaskar. On behalf of RIRF and my own behalf, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. It is indeed my proud privilege and a pleasure to be here today among the eminent gathering. Before I proceed, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to offer my homage to one of the notable industrialists of our times, Mr. Cyrus Mistry, whom the country lost tragically to a road accident. India continues to lose lives, majority in the productive age group, younger group, to the road traffic accident. And we also lose around 5 to 7% of the GDP, despite multi-stakeholder efforts from government, corporate, non-government organizations. Time has come where we do a collective, urgent, and decisive action. IRF India's efforts to build a national action plan for road safety and adopting a 5E program are decisive steps in this direction. While engineering road ensures safe road, even when an accident takes place, life is not lost. There is an urgent need not only to create awareness, but sensitize masses as human errors contribute to majority of the road traffic accidents. The concerns relating to our speeding, use of helmets, speed belts, respecting road traffic signs, right of way, maintenance of personal vehicles, maintenance of roads, avoiding external modifications. These are some aspects that needs to constantly and consistently improve. A culture of building a safe behavior on the road should begin at a young age. As parents, teachers, and society, everyone wants the younger generation to do well academically. The same zest and enthusiasm should be there and inculcate in young minds. This would help them appreciate the need to practice safe driving, to ensure safety of oneself and for the others on the road. IRF India's effort through the present webinar series of three webinars is to visit and revisit various aspects of road safety education, have a 360 degrees overview 
to bring out relevant observations through presentations, discussions between the eminent panelists. Today's webinar on road safety education will lay focus on the road safety curriculum in schools, formation of road safety clubs, the role of parents and teachers, and the safety fleets and training of drivers. Our panel of speakers have ample experience in these aspects, and I keenly look forward to listening to them and adopt their ideas with future ground level programs. With these words, ladies and gentlemen, I once again extend to you a very warm welcome and encourage you to be connected with us till the end of this program. Last but not the least, I thank Maruti Suzuki, World Economic Forum, and the operations team for putting together this interesting webinar. Jai Hind. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to invite uh, founder president of IRFIC, Mr. KK Kapila, to deliver his keynote address. Mr. Kapila, please. My esteemed colleagues in the panel, road safety champions from across the world who are listening and who are interested in this subject, delegates, Ladies and gentlemen, road safety is the biggest challenge that this world is facing today. Over 1.3 million people die in road accidents across the world, and the figure is ever increasing in spite of our passing the decade of action plan that we will reduce road accidents and fatalities by 50% by the end of 2020. Nothing of this sort has happened. 10 jumbos crash every single day, but you will hardly find a news in any newspaper, except for when people like Cyprus die, their papers get filled up. Otherwise, nobody bothers who died, where he died, what happened. It's a very unfortunate scenario. The economic loss of all this is over $1.8 trillion. $1.8 trillion, which is, which is more than the budget of 10 poor nations of this world. Yet there is not enough effort on the part of the world to control this finance. In India, in spite of efforts by the government of India, and championing the cause of road safety by many institutions working on various aspects, we have not been able to contain it even, leave aside reducing it. The last year's record of road deaths as reported is 1.65 lakhs fatalities. It's a very massive number, but uh, the, this is what is recorded. But, but the WHO believes that this record is, is not up to the mark and the, probably the fatalities are more than 3 lakhs. Irrespective of the figure, whether they are 3 lakhs or 1.65 lakhs, this is a very large, unacceptable figure. We need to work out something to address this on top priority as a nation. We all owe it. The economic loss to Indian exchequer is 2.91 lakh crores. A mind-boggling 2.91 lakh crores as per Bosch who published this data last year. What are we doing? How are we handling it? After a lot of struggle within myself, I, uh, because I have been working on this since 2008, I came to the conclusion that the, we have not been able to achieve it because we did piecemeal work in various places and never ever got into the right mode to do the work collectively on all fronts. 
Ladies and gentlemen, road safety is a function of five E's. The first E pertains to road engineering. The second E pertains to vehicular engineering and policy corrections. The third E pertains to education and mass awareness. The fourth E pertains to enforcement. And the fifth E pertains to emergency care. Unless you work on all the five E's together on any road stretch, you cannot expect road safety to come. Unfortunately, we have been working on one or the other. We have worked on gray, removal of gray spots, black spots. We have worked on training uh, on school education in some stretches. We have worked on trauma in certain areas, head injury foundation established by the Jodhpur Maharaja, worked on his areas, but everybody has been working in isolation and no coordinated effort has gone into this particular problem. And that is why we haven't got any results worth its name. For the first time, we have launched a 12 webinar series last year in February and concluded them in December last year. And in, under that webinar series of 12 webinars, we had the first six webinars on E1, that is the road engineering and the challenges of road engineering and what needs to be done to improve the roads and make them forgiving. The second E, uh, we, E2 we covered in the next webinar, the seventh webinar. The eighth webinar was on education and mass awareness. And then there were two webinars which we did on enforcement. And the last webinar we did was on emergency care. As a result of these five webinars, webinar, these uh, uh, webinars on the bringing out what needs to be done on the five E's, we have prepared a, a draft road safety action plan 2022 for, for the Indian government. The, Outcome of E1 was sent to the Director General of Road Development. The item, the outcome of E2 was sent to the uh, concerned secretary in the Ministry of Transport looking after vehicular uh, uh, aspect and the heavy industry ministry because this is, a con this is being jointly handled by both. The third E3 was sent to education secretary uh, and the Secretary Information Broadcasting because mass awareness comes under Secretary Information and Broadcasting. Then the next E was sent to Mr. Ajay Bhalla, the Home Secretary for Enforcement. And the fifth was sent to Mr. Rajesh Bhushan, Secretary Health, that please finalize your own action plan pertaining to your department. And don't tell me later, that you are not consulted and you don't own it. When you go to education ministry, they say it is not our subject. It's a subject of the Ministry of Transport. You go to health, they also say the same thing. You go to enforcement, they say, no, no, it's not our subject. It's a problem of the Ministry of Road Transport. But actually, it is a problem of each one of us. It is not a problem of roads ministry alone. And unless we all realize that we all have to contribute to contain it, road safety will not come in India. You can keep doing anything you want to do. But if you want to bring in road safety, it has to be done by an action plan prepared by each and owned by each wing of the government. Everybody has to come together. And I, my aim of this exercise today is to bring everyone together and we will have the Road Safety Action Plan 2022 released either by the President of India or the Prime Minister of India in Vigyan Bhavan before the end of this year. That is my commitment to this August gathering. Listening to me. Today's webinar is part E3, which we are going to uh, debate and deliberate in details by various experts who have gathered here today. This will bring out as to what we have to do under education and mass awareness. This 
road safety education is a very important aspect because unless we try and ingrain the in the child's mind road safety from very beginning we will not be able to bring the road sensitivity towards road safety and as, as it is said that children are best teachers even for their parents if your child is sitting with you and has been trained in road safety has been has been ingrained in his mind he will tell you if you are doing a mistake if you are over speeding he will say baba please reduce, reduce your speed you are going up beyond uh, the designated speed so and that impact of that child telling the father is immense so that is the kind of ingrainment in their minds which we need to do we have also prepared an anthem for mass awareness which will be relayed to you after my uh, address so you will listen to a road safety anthem of one minute this anthem has been prepared in all indian 23 indian languages and 10 foreign languages the foreign languages cover the entire world and let me share with you ladies and gentlemen that the the the, the maximum benefit which has been derived out of this today is by the chinese because the mandarin version is being uh, observed in every factory in every industry in china when the shift begins it begins with one minute anthem that's the kind of message which i want to convey we prepare it we send it to the world across the world starts using we don't use it enough in our own homes it's a sad scenario i would like to appeal to all of you that wherever you have any influence please try and start using the anthem army public schools have come forward and started doing it i am grateful to jana rana for that but we are trying elsewhere we have not yet succeeded but i am confident that in 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 months to come we will be able to start it all over the country here as well i would like to appeal our to our friend director the transport who is with us to get this included in the budget for relay under on doordarshan prasar bharti and various other uh, uh, channels and radio channels fm etc it is doable there is no re reason why it shouldn't be done and now i request somna ghosh to kindly relay the anthem yeah hey पहली बात में नियम का पालन करना है भैया सड़कों पे सावधानी पहली बात में Now I would like to request Director M O R T H, Mr. Gaurav Hari Om Gupta, to give his observations as a guest of honor. Mr. Gupta, please. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. 
as already mentioned by Mr. Kapila, road accidents are among top 10 causes of all deaths occurring globally. Over 1.3 million people die each year due to road accidents, with 90% of these deaths occurring in low and middle income countries. India ranks first globally in terms of number of road fatalities, contributing to around 11% of global road accident-related deaths. This has become a serious public health concern with grave socioeconomic impact. Government of India is highly committed to reduce road accidents, related deaths, and injuries. A significant number of victims of road crashes are people in a young age group of up to 25 years, which account for almost 27% of road fatalities in India. It is important that sense of road safety is built into the young people from the early years through road safety education. Initiating education on road safety early will mean that these children will have good attitudes and skills first at pedestrians and cyclists and then as vehicle users when they start driving. Thus, road safety must be included in the school curriculum at various stages. Curriculum should also include topics such as parents' role in supervision, safe drop-off and pick-up near school zones and bus stops, safe road user behaviors, road rules, etc. It is heartening to note IRF India's efforts to sensitize the young minds as all good and bad habits are inculcated by influencing factors during the formative years. It is imperative to relentlessly push for formal road safety education. I would like to conclude by saying that road safety is a complex issue. There is a requirement for a comprehensive and collaborative efforts from all stakeholders, including central government, state government, private companies, NGOs, and citizens. Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the secretary, additional secretary of Ministry of Education Mrs. Lam Choi Sweetie Changshan is unable to attend. So we will directly go to the uh, video on road safety education. We'll just shortly play that. Thank 
Uh, may I now request Mr. P.K. Banerjee, Executive Director, SIAM, to give the vote of thanks. Mr. Banerjee, please. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just want to apologize on behalf of Mr. Banerjee as uh, urgently he has gotten a call and he has to just uh, leave for uh, some urgent uh, agenda. But on his behalf, I would like to present uh, uh, thanks. So if uh, you permit, so I could say the vote of thanks. Hello. Hope my voice is uh, audible. Yes, you are audible. Please go ahead. Thank you. So, respected Kapila sir and all the esteemed guests present today uh, here at this uh, webinar, uh, as all the speakers has a common. Uh, message that we have to do a collaborative work to bring the safety on our roads. So as Kapila sir mentioned, when we'll do the collaborative work, then only we'll be able to achieve our target of reducing the road fatalities on our road. So this is the message we have to take it forward and uh, work with all the government department, corporates and NGOs so that we can reduce the road fatalities on our roads. And that's what we want to do. Uh, IRF is already doing much work in regard to the education of students. They had made the curriculum and same way the other agencies have also done the work. Siam and SAFE had also done many uh, work in regard to the spreading the message of road safety education among the students. So to this forum, I would like to request, yes, we have to take this work forward with the collaborative effort. So I would like to extend all my thanks to the esteemed speakers present here at this forum and uh, would like to say that Siam and SAFE will always available to collaborate with each and everyone to bring the safety on our roads. 
Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, may I now request Mr. KK Kapila, President Emeritus IRF, to give introduction of the experts and the webinar theme. Mr. Kapila, please. The webinar theme is road safety education and awareness, a comprehensive approach. And the first webinar under this series is on road safety education during formating years. As we just, as I just mentioned in my keynote address, we have to catch them young and try and inculcate in the mind of young children the essential requirement of being of the good road behavior. It is imperative that they become responsible citizens as far as road safety is concerned, amongst other things. The first speaker in this is, uh, will be covering the topic of school curriculum on road safety and road safety clubs and schools. And this is going to be uh, addressed by Mr. Aklesh Srivastava, who is an advisor with the World Economic Forum. Uh, Mr. Aglesh Tirivastra is a globally known digital and innovative leader with path-breaking e-governance projects like FastTag, e-tendering platform, ODR portal, citizen-centric multiple highway information applications, and mobile applications, geofencing of national highways, etc. Aglesh Tirivastra is currently leading the World Economic Forum's initiative in India Road Safety 2.0. Road Safety 2.0 is shaping the future of road safety in India with a technology-driven approach and creating a human-centric road ecosystem where technology compensates for human limitations and saves life by improving the road safety. He is also an IRF road safety ambassador. Over to you, Aklesh. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I will take this opportunity to share my screen and uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> I see a lot of participants and very enthusiastic uh, um, panelists and the uh, viewers. And uh, very much thank you to IRF for um, uh, giving and uh, doing this human job in the road safety. As already explained by everyone, uh, the road safety is a, a major cause of concern for uh, all policy makers, the citizens, the country, everyone. And unfortunately, India, uh, we need to be a little more worried about it and do something uh, because just 1% vacuums uh, causes 11% of the uh, uh, global fatalities in India. Uh, of course, renting the economy and other issues which already explained by the uh, Mr. Kapila, the president, the uh, director, Marth. Uh, what we need to have is a very comprehensive approach and uh, the national policy prepared by um, IRF towards this is uh, um, uh, one of the wonderful document I have come across, covering all the five E's in a very lucid manner, connected to one after another. Uh, and as a part of this um, uh, webinar, today we are addressing the uh, number one issue, the education uh, and starting young. Why we are doing this, uh, just uh, I was, uh, while going through the data related to this, I found that 10% of the uh, deaths, but uh, uh, the uh, total deaths which are happening because, because of road uh, accidents are among the children who are below the 14 year of age. That was very surprising figure when I came across. Not only the uh, deaths, uh, I mean these, but the roads, uh, the school zones, uh, they are also uh, ill-equipped, they're not proper signage, like only 17% of schools are having a um, signage which shows there is a school. 11.5%, uh, I mean, the speed limits are displayed, whereas uh, at the near the school, it has to be. Children were not aware, 
uh, and uh, so there has to be uh, a serious uh, effort if we uh, start uh, putting the road safety awareness uh, starting with the children and going forward uh, with the uh, drivers the uh, other campaigns and the media uh, so the holistic approach in this uh, which has been designed by rf is uh, wonderful uh, the uh, first is the road safety education in a school and educational institute uh, this i will be deliberating in more detail today uh, then uh, it goes further once they are done the children are done because children are the brand ambassadors then we are moving towards the scaling behavior of driver community very focused now we are not we are going to uh, imbibe the uh, awareness in the driving community then we are going with the community as a whole uh, the people uh, along the road the bystanders the people who can be uh, crucial help uh, in case of any emergency or the road accident so I saw that program is also included into the policy prepared by uh, IRF India chapter. And then the uh, media involvement around the road safety campaign and awareness, pro awareness program. Um, that's the uh, media which has to uh, from, take it to the people like uh, road safety and them. Uh, it, if it is uh, they, I mean, telecasted on television at, uh, in our TV or in the cinema halls, is going to drive the message uh, into everybody's mind. And especially uh, uh, if we talk about the children, definitely they are going to learn from it. Uh, so uh, now focusing on the first thing, uh, the starting them young. IRF has been doing this since a uh, uh, long time. In, uh, first time, in fact, 2013, 14, uh, they had developed a curriculum uh, uh, kind of thing for the school in consultation with uh, children. And uh, this was uh, made part of the curriculum also, but it is unfortunately had to come as a subject uh, in some of the um, field where children can directly read it. And the curriculum has been prepared uh, for class six to 10. Uh, while I was talking to the Ministry of Education regarding this, uh, they are uh, in a process of uh, um, uh, putting this as a subject where children are mandated to read it, uh, not just remain in a curriculum, but actually it gets implemented. More detail of this are already available at the uh, road safety side of uh, IRF. <clears throat> IRF has been, uh, other than this, I can see uh, they're not only theory, but they're actually doing practice, uh, the things in, uh, on the ground as well. Uh, when I can see there is a, a seven state where uh, they had, Test almost uh, close to uh, 2000 schools where uh, this program is being uh, already implemented at some places it is completed where in mean, two states it's a uh, 90% complete uh, Rajasth uh, Rajasthan of course because the schools are 686 and uh, Madhya Pradesh 306 so these are 90% and it's uh, under progress these are giving the direct uh, insight into how the actually um, we when we translate a, a program uh, initiative on ground what are the ground challenges and how these are being resolved that's a good learning and based on this uh, when we present a um, paper to uh, a policy letter to the uh, ministry of education i'm sure there's going to take it forward uh, and it's going to <clears throat> improve the road safety at least in this aspect the uh, road safety education, the target group which IRF has focused uh, is the 10 year and above and up to, uh, because the children first they uh, drive the cycle, then they migrate to the motorcycles and then they uh, take the four wheelers and all. But uh, uh, generally it is believed that uh, cycle and motorcycle, not much, uh, much of the difference is there. That's not the correct, uh, there is a, um, big difference into the uh, about the road safety because the speed of motorcycle is higher. So the general awareness about the road safety, if it is uh, uh, imbibed in the or ignited into the uh, children's mind, he is probably going to uh, not only implement himself, save himself, but he is also uh, going to tell the family members, the neighbors, the relatives, 
and I can I will be sharing. Uh, I was doing uh, this uh, ex ex uh, program uh, uh, for the World Economic Forum in some of the school. We found the children were giving a um, uh, very good suggestions. I will be explaining it a little later, and they were telling the story uh, when we took the feedback uh, that how but I mean how we improved this. And I see uh, IRF has also done in uh, Bundelkhand Express. Uh, almost 16,000 children they have done, which is coming. So the content which we, we are covering uh, in our road safety education is we are telling them about the roads. Uh, we are telling them the road is a shared asset. It doesn't belong to a single uh, vehicle owner. And then what are the kind of road users? It's a mixed traffic. This is what is to, a very important point has to be um, told to the children. Um, uh, a, unlike the Western countries, the traffic in India is a uh, mixed kind of traffic. On the road, you find almost everything, right? From the uh, two wheelers, three wheeler, bullock cart, and sometimes animals also. So uh, that preparedness and the adaptability in mind has to be there. Then we uh, telling the children the what are the traffic signs, how many kinds of signal, what which are the emergency signal, very important signal they shouldn't miss it. Uh, then. What are the road uh, risks? Uh, what are the hazards? But didn't include that. Uh, and uh, where they should be more attentive when they, uh, if they know the risk, probably they know how to mitigate it. What are the good Samaritan law? Because this is again an area where uh, still people get apprehensive if, say, somebody, uh, some accident victim they see uh, and he requires uh, help during that golden time. But people are not aware that. There is a law which protects them because of the legal hassles and police, etc. People uh, forcefully avoid it, though they want to help, but uh, lack of awareness. So here again, we are telling them the what are the first aid required uh, during that time when, when uh, things can within golden hour when life can be saved, and then what are the basic rules of the motor vehicle app, the road safety rules, slow and drink and drive, follow the speed limits preventive measures to avoid the accidents. Uh, the uh, experimental learning, uh, based on this, the uh, we have further divided. This is uh, what is the school, uh, I mean, putting the next generation driver on seat to promote. And the best thing uh, which I want to highlight here is uh, the, uh, the program which we uh, did once is the uh, so spread into three days. The first day we told them the uh, what is the uh, road, what are it's a shared asset, uh, what are kind of the roads as I explained to you, and then once they understood, second day it's only one hour. Uh, second day, uh, what are the risk factors, what are the hazard perceptions, signals, signages, etc. Third day, the these students were uh, with the school uh, uh, permission of principal and the teachers were taken to the nearby uh, uh, road uh, near the, their school, where these uh, young children were asked to find out, do a kind of audit and tell uh, what are the lacking over here, what has been told to you in last two days. And let me tell you the amazing uh, result given by the children just by making a simple uh, draft or some paintings that here zebra crossing is not there. The, and some of the suggestions were even better than uh, highway experts suggesting it. So the, for example, say uh, these are things uh, the children suggested. And once uh, we requested the authorities to implement, uh, we can see the figures like this. And it uh, in one of the pilot, it led to almost 90% plus reduction in the um, six months. And not only this, the children uh, during the feedback session, when we uh, checked them after six months, uh, they came out with a very interesting uh, experience uh, that um, I mean, we could save uh, two lives. Uh, one of my family member, he was a, a, a reckless driver. He never used to wear a helmet. Now he wears helmet. He met with an accident, but because of helmet, uh, he could be saved. So I can take that credit. So this is how the enthusiasm of children helps to uh, promote the thing. And that's a wonderful um, initiative and curriculum, uh, which inculcates the, this is what we are thinking that uh, if uh, more and more children learn, if they see the uh, safe zone near their school, 
uh, this again every day they are watching near the school inculcates uh, their mind it gives them a freedom how i um, mean understanding what is being done this is the another thing which i am uh, want to highlight uh, the wonderful initiative done by irf on the bundelkhand expressway uh, this starts uh, from chitrakoot and connects the agra lucknow expressway <clears throat> and uh, the almost uh, 5 and 300 kilometer uh, expressway uh, recently inaugurated by honorable prime minister here uh, the irf went to almost 224 schools along all the packages so what they are doing uh, they find out the uh, schools which is located within 2 kilometers of the highway uh, all those schools are mapped on the map then they are uh, geolocated uh the team goes to the schools with those curriculums which i just described discuss with them take on board the teachers and the school staff and then uh, these uh, trainings are imparted to them these training were imparted to 16282 students and uh, probably this may be one of the reason because almost 6 uh, for 5 month uh, this express way has been launched uh there has been a report of uh, Uh, the road getting damaged at place because of rain but uh, fortunately there has not been any uh, report like mm, there has been accident or uh, some serious fatality has been reported on this at least i haven't seen uh, but that may be one of the um, good reason for them uh, then the road safety and them already explained by mr kapila uh, this is a, mm, uh, already done in all regional languages Uh, this should be a part of the um, daily morning uh, prayer or at least once in a uh, week or uh, twice in a month it can be uh, so that children are or in any if we, some sports activity some program is being done uh, some cultural functions there this anthem uh, should be uh, played so that uh, children get uh, more used to this and uh, uh, apart from this these uh, this can be shown to other places as well so that was uh, basically for the um, uh, children uh, when we are uh, what is the curriculum and how we had implemented it in part in these these seven states uh, with a fascinating results uh, these are uh, the results will be compiled and uh, will be submitting a report to the ministry of education to take it forward uh, to the ministry of uh, information technology uh, which can uh, promote it further take it to um, uh, uh, take it to the cinema halls the radios the tvs and everywhere uh, fm radios these are played so that will be uh, one coming to the second thing which was the uh, drivers uh, again works are going on but i think uh, um, positive time is there so i will restrict to this uh, that i will discuss during our uh, discussions during the uh, panel discussions time thank you very much over to you sir. and uh, i would only like to mention that the uh, it should be a part of prayer not once a fortnight or week but every single day yes the only uh, addition i would like to make or a correction i would like to make Thank i would you. also like to share with you that i am trying to have this introduced in the bus code so that uh, it becomes mandatory and in every bus after every 5 minutes you hear one month anthem one minute anthem so if it is provided in the bus code it will become obligatory for all buses all over the country to have this as a as an item where, where bus passengers will have to listen whether they like it or not after every 5 minutes one minute anthem fantastic that it will be in fact very useful and so the that is only that, that's the only way you can really uh, make the masses aware and sensitize the masses thank you next uh, subject uh, that we are taking up is culture of road safety starting from schools and road and responsibility of parent teacher school administration this is going to be covered by my dear friend and colleague professor prajapati trivedi who is the commonwealth secretary general special envoy for the sdg implementation 
and distinguished professor, Management Development Institute of India. Professor Pradhapati Tewadi is currently the Commonwealth Secretary General, Special Envoy for SDG Implementation and a, and a distinguished professor at the Management Development Institute in India. In addition, he is a visiting fellow at the IBM Center for the Business for the business of government, Washington, D.C., and continues to teach economics at the Harvard Kennedy School of Government, Harvard University, where he has taught economics for over 40 years since 1979. He has had extensive experience working in the government of India, international organizations, and the academia. From 2009 to 2014, he worked as a permanent secretary to the government of India in the cabinet secretariat in the prime minister's office. It was during this phase that we interacted a lot, where he was responsible for designing a highly regarded whole of government performance management system for government departments and reporting the results to the prime minister of India. He worked as a senior economist with the World Bank for 15 years from 1995 to 2009 Economic Advisor to the Government of India from 1992 to 1994, and a Chair Professor of Public Sector Management at the Indian Institute of Management, Calcutta, 1987 to 1992. He has authored several books and academy articles. He is recipient of several prestigious academic awards. Over to you, Prajapati Ji. Thank you, Mr. Kapila. Thank you very much. Uh, for that kind introduction, but here is my, let me just put the screen so we can all be on the same page. Uh, Mr. Kapila, you can see the screen? Yes, I can. It's absolutely very good. fine. Very good. Excellent. Thank you very much. I'm very excited and thank you for inviting me. Uh, though I'm not an expert, but uh, this is an issue. I will tell you my views on this, having worked in the government and and uh, internationally and still being concerned with it. Anyone who's a friend of Mr. Kapila knows that this is a very serious problem. I have been, and that's why I'm always willing to put my shoulder and, and put my support behind Mr. Kapila. It's such a good cause. And, um, you know, by the time this is over, 10 more jumbo jets would have crashed and we would have done nothing. Just, uh, and, you know, it's been happening each time. I remember this uh, dramatic statistics. It really gets me all charged up that we need to do something. And it is in this spirit that I am here to share my views uh, and, and get your views and see how we can move forward. That's the important thing. I have uh, divided this presentation into a few parts, but this is basically the focus of this webinar. As you already know, I've just uh, reminding you, it's a school curriculum on road safety and road safety clubs in, in schools. That's no topic number one. Two is culture of road safety, starting from schools and role and responsibility of parents, teachers, school administration, safety in school transport fleet and training of drivers of school fleet. Now, this is the focus. And therefore, before I move on, let me first quickly agree so there is no doubt that these are all important issues. Nobody should be in doubt. We don't need to repeat this. We can say ditto, ditto, and this will be uh, understood that we all believe these are important issues. There can be no doubt in anyone's mind. There is the second fact that India is far behind the best practice in these areas. You can see the statistics that have been quoted already, and you can find plenty that we are not at the cutting edge by any stretch of imagination. If anything, we are you know, lagging behind quite significantly. And that's why Mr. Kapila is so charged up and so motivated to change that situation around, and we should really be among the, the lead and set an example. There is also no doubt that there is urgent action is required. We can quickly agree. These are not debatable points, and I'm not making them. Uh, I'm saying that we should stop repeating these points and quickly agree on this. This webinar is therefore very timely. There's no doubt about it. And uh, not just one, many webinars are required to really make a dent in this issue. So we can all agree on this. Above all, what gets me most interested is 
So many of you would know that this issue is part of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which is also known as SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, in fact, to be specific, the SDG 3, which deals with good health and well-being, there is a specific target which says aiming for the reduction of global road traffic deaths and injuries by 50% by 2020. Uh, it is for us to look at the data and figure out uh, it should be of no surprise where the world is, where we are. The progress is not, not uh, satisfactory. Let's be clear about that. So when I come to webinars or any seminar, I always ask myself, who am I speaking to? Who is the audience? I don't know uh, the 260 people who are watching where you are from, but who am I speaking to? I mean, clearly we respect you and I'm delighted and grateful that you have spared your time and you're probably much more motivated on this issue than most of us. But who are we really talking to? If it is the experts, like the ones you have just heard, then certainly I, as an economist and someone who has, uh, you know, is a teaching, preaching economist, basically, that's my training, I'm surely outclassed, outsmarted, uh, outnumbered. I mean, there's already, Mr. Kapla said, there's a full plan that he has made, an action plan. So I'm not going to really come up and point out something that which has not been thought through, uh, and it is a, quite an exercise. If it is the government, so if we are talking to experts, I, as I said, I have no competitive or comparative advantage to speak in that area. If it is the government, then we need to ask whether this is the first time this effort has been made to inform the government about this issue. I mean, I remember, Mr. Kapila, when I was the secretary to the government, and today, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have the pleasure of listening to the additional secretary. But when I was secretary, I took it very seriously, and I'll share some of that experience. And I've been hearing about it. Uh, I don't think that Mr. Kapila has left any stones unturned. I've known him uh, for some time, and he has gone and met secretaries, ministers, and prime ministers, and he has, he has really taken this issue, so everybody is aware of it. So we should not think this is the first time this issue is being raised. In fact, is there a crisis of ideas? Are we doing this webinar so that we can give government new ideas? Is that really the purpose of this? What is the purpose? Um, is it for the government because they don't know these things? I don't think so. You just heard, again, both the government and the non-government sector. They are absolutely fully aware and they are doing, and Mr. Kapla has actually taken the cat out of the bag and said that he has got a comprehensive action plan which has considered this thing and so it's not lack of ideas so we are not here to generate an extra idea which has not been generated in fact uh, <clears throat> the question then is what is the main issue as far as the idea is concerned i basically this is a standard operating procedure before any seminar you should google and see. So I googled road safety education and I got 1 billion hits, 1 billion, 883 million, which is close to a billion. So you can see that road safety solutions, this is just a screenshot um, from the Google. So all the ideas are there. So if you're expecting me to contribute to this uh, 1 billion plus one idea, I'm afraid uh, that's not going to happen this afternoon. So uh, the I do not, uh, I, I seriously believe we do not have a crisis of ideas. We have enough ideas. That, that let's all agree that ideas are all there. We have a crisis of implementation, as has been repeatedly said, but we say it is crisis of implementation, but we go back to generating more ideas and discussing ideas. In fact, I am on record, and this is not something I'm boasting. I've, when I was in the government, I worked uh, in the cabinet secretariat. I told the cabinet secretary that, sir, for two years, can we put a moratorium on new ideas in, in India so that nobody generates any new ideas? We just implement all the billions of ideas that we have already generated. We have got massive 15 volumes of administrative reform commission reports dealing with police reforms, everything. There is no new 
reason for us to have a seminar on police reform. These people spent millions of rupees to write this report, took five years, the best brains in India and abroad. We need to implement those reports. And the good thing is, or ironically, those reports have been accepted by the group of ministers. So it's not like it's an academic exercise. It went through a proper government wetting uh, through the cabinet secretariat and the cabinet, and then finally a group of ministers approved it. So it's a government decision, you know, not being implemented. So I think we have, and we should really raise this issue in every forum where we meet and we start generating ideas as if this is the first time we are doing it and all the excitement of doing it for the first time is there so i'm afraid having lived long enough and seen long enough and seen many things i am of the view that we should really just have seminars on implementation not on ideas anymore because these ideas are all there we should say okay why was it not implemented in this three hours that we are together how are we going to implement? what is the difference that we are going to make because if you're going to repeat these things which are already in the comprehensive action plan, then we have not made any marginal addition except for awareness between enthusiasts. I mean, these 260 people are uh, uh, for which I am at least very grateful that you have taken time to join, um, but you are already informed, motivated, and that's why you are here. So it's speaking in, to insiders, basically. And so we need to really, really think about it. Now, the question is, the, one of the topic that mute, was I, uh, Mr. Kapla, was I muted? I think you, was I? Well, go ahead. Yeah, I yeah, think, I mean, uh, how long have I been muted? No, it wasn't there. It was uh, maybe a fraction of seconds only. It's okay, second. somebody, just, yeah, I got a screen message saying, please unmute yourself. No, sorry no, about that. Yeah. I'm sorry for that. That was written. No, 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 uh, just, uh, you know, because then I would want to say, uh, repeat what I have said. No, no, please, go so, ahead. Yeah, so we, 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 uh, one of the topics that we are focusing this afternoon is the poor culture of road safety. Uh, in my view, it is a symptom, not the cause of the more fundamental problem of poor culture of implementation. I mean, uh, I don't have to give you an academic report on this. You see our behavior as Indians. When we go abroad, we are so well behaved. In Singapore, we walk, we never throw chewing gum on the street. We know if we'll get beaten or, you know, there are strict rules in Saudi Arabia or wherever we are in the West. The minute we get into Air India to get back to New Delhi, I mean, all the discipline goes somehow that we feel it's our country, we, we, are, we can do as if the other places we are prisoners or something. So, I mean, I think uh, it's not that we have a culture. I believe it is, the system that we, makes us behave. We are very, very smart people, and that's why we have all the CEOs in the world, because we adapt ourselves. There is a culture of excellence. We will be the best. You know, all the top, uh, I don't need to repeat, you know the story from Google to, to Microsoft to you name it, uh, everybody has an Indian CEO because we are, well, given the system, we can. So we can't say we, there is some fault in us. We are not. In fact, we are excellent at following system. And that's why Indians are loved everywhere, because you tell us a system in a country, we'll think it's our system and we follow the system. But when there is no system, then we don't follow it. We are not fools. You know, and that's what is the issue that we need to really think. And we must all raise voice to changing system rather than say there's a cultural issue, we need to educate people. Well, Indians are educated, uh, but we behave differently here, we behave differently there. So education makes no difference. Uh, uh, it is the consequences of a system that makes difference. And we, need, we don't put enough emphasis on that, and that's why it doesn't improve. I have seen it myself with my eyes, so I, I am a big believer uh, in this. So then what is the solution to this crisis? I mean, let's talk about solution and uh, not just about this. And it's my personal view. And now, thank God I'm not in the government, so I can speak freely as a professor, which is my basic training. Uh, we have to agree and diagnose the problem properly. Otherwise, we'll keep repeating banal solutions. Road safety is a public good issue, and free markets can all solve this problem. 
Public good is like defense, to put it in a simple way. Defense is supposed to be public good. Suppose I were to tell you that defense is important, please uh, come and join the army or do contribute money to it. You will not. You will say, why should I? It's a public good. You know, if you're going to defend India, uh, I will be defended. Why should I contribute? And so there's a classic problem of free rider in this, that someone should do it. It's not my problem. And so markets do not work. And this is why this is why this is, uh, you know, we need sound public policies for road safety and effective government regulation. There is no other shortcut. So let's not, you know, I, I applaud and I, since I know the efforts that Mr. Kapila is like, uh, you know, I pray for his health. He's, he's so worried about and um, has made this as a cause celebre. Uh, but, but the point is, this has to be sound public policies and effective government regulation. And then, of course, effective implementation. You can make great policies, regulations, but if they're not implemented properly, they remain on paper. And we have thousands of such examples of wonderful policies uh, which are not implemented. So implementation, to me, is the crisis that we are facing in this area. Even you can see SDGs, they're not being implemented, not just in India. How do you get this? So it has risen to that level that now it's part of the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda. And yet, uh, we don't have enough mechanism for this. So I, I'm going to now come to the solutions that what I have learned. And in the um, past two years, while there was COVID, uh, we conducted about uh, you know large number of training programs. When I said we, I, I'm wearing my Commonwealth head uh, in my capacity as the Commonwealth staff. Uh, we did you know, with 44 member countries, 1,200 senior officials, 400 officers from Barbados, eight major training pro programs. So we, we interacted with them. And I tried to find out around the world in two years. So this is not a lifelong long project I could speak to. These are all prime minister's offices and the secretaries to the government, respective, very senior cabinet secretaries, etc. What is the issue and how do we go? This is what we found. And I'm just sharing that. I'm not prescribing and uh, for whatever it's worth, what I found and we found. Uh, performance, governance, and institutional capacity of any government, any country, depends on quality of its systems. In fact, this is uh, it's not my personal view. This is from Peter Drucker, the management guru at Harvard, and as everybody knows. He says that the outcome, whether it is road safety or whether it is, um, ch you know, child mortality. I mean, you know, any of these very critical issues, and I could name many other spurious drugs in India. There are life and death matters galore. All of them, the outcomes, the results, the performance, whatever word you like, depends 80% on system and 20% on people. This is really standard among management. So if you're working on the people front, you will not make much of progress if your system is just rotten and it's dysfunctional or it's there, it's non-existent. So within the people category, 80% of that depends on the leadership. So really very little depends on rank and file. What you need is a good leader with a good system and you can do miracles. And this history of ours, of humankind, is full of that. I mean, from Ashoka the Great to Alexander the Great, they were great leaders with great systems. They conquered the world for us. So, you know, this is really the mantra that we need to focus on. What is our system and who's leading it? Second, the basic causes of poor institutional capacity, the government's inability are similar across nations. When you close your eyes, you think all the governments are conspiring to tell you the same story because it's the same story everywhere. And, and you know, you find that uh, the one big cause that everybody repeats is that in every country, there are multiple principles who have multiple goals, which are often conflicting. Now, the same thing appears here. I mean, we are in a road uh, safety seminar, webinar. So we think this is the most important thing. Next door, there is somebody who just thinks the most important issue is get the, you know, Jal Jeevan program, just get fresh water to the people. Forget road safety. They're, they have no cars to drive. Get them water to drink. There is another one who is saying, look, 
I mean, what kind of, you know, we have out of school children, millions of people who have, don't have access to school, and you're talking about road safety, get them in the school. So there are people who have, you know, so everybody feels they have a right to dictate the public agenda. And that would be fine, except for there are conflicts. I mean, you can't do it all. There are only limited resources. You have to choose. So you have multiple principles and multiple goals, which are often conflicting. Then what do you do? The bureaucrats just have a fuzzy notion of what is expected. Whatever they do, somebody tells them, you're not doing this. You're not doing road safety. You're not doing clean water. You're not doing energy, this thing. So we need a systems approach. It can't be individuals. We add to this fuzziness by just shouting louder, louder because it's not that it will get done. So we need to just know I'm not, uh, you know, I'm saying it respectfully. I consider myself to be a lifelong believer and a public servant. So this is a fact. Uh, we've confirmed this with 44 countries with almost 2,000 participants. Causes of poor institutional capacity. Another reason is everybody says, as it was said just a few minutes earlier, that you go to the Ministry of Education and say, that's not me. The not me syndrome, it's the Ministry of Transportation. They'll say, well, safety is like a health issue. Don't you know in the SDG, it is under the health and well-being, so it must be health issue. Uh, let the Ministry of Health do it. So it's not me syndrome is a classic way in which the problems are being passed around in the government. So any government, and there are many governments, including our government uh, at points, various points in time, which has broken all this and has done a fantastic job. Wherever it has happened, they've taken care of these problems. So what are we learning? Number one, Governance and institutional capacity depends on quality of systems. So we need to focus, we need to advise governments what are these good systems, look at international experience and not say do this, but say these are the systems approach rather than this or that. Basic causes are the same, we have just seen. Fortunately, the solutions to do this are also same. And I call them the generally accepted performance principles, or these are across. So when we have actually, this is all published, so I'm not saying uh, for this webinar, we had a meeting of all the cabinet secretaries of the Commonwealth countries, and they have agreed to a set of common way of dealing with this thing. And anybody interested, I'm happy to share. So the, while the problems, uh, causes may be the same, their solutions, and I'll try to end by just uh, mentioning some of them that what we have found for effective governments, um, what what is required. I don't have the time. Uh, unfortunately, I just have limited time here. So I'll just mention this and end myself and happy to answer questions if you have any and have dialogue. You have my email. Uh, as an academic, I always invite uh, conversation, dialogue, so this can go on beyond this webinar. So effective governments we have found, first of all, we must be able to measure what we are doing. Appropriate performance measurement systems, it should, is very important. You know, man, I don't want to bore you. The, the, what, uh, how do you measure child safety? Are we, how do you even measure whether we are making progress in, uh, when we have these campaigns for educating people? There should be a measurement that uh, not millions were spent and we thought we were trying to educate and nobody really is educated. We can't have anecdotal studies or stories that you know we feel people are getting educated. There must be a rigorous way of every rupee is coming from a valuable opportunity cost or alternative use of that money. So it has to be accounted for. So that's very important. Uh, whole of government coverage, nothing gets done you know, including road safety, as you've seen, multiple agencies have to be involved and they have to be all held accountable simultaneously. You can't just focus on Ministry of Transport and ignore health and education. They're all involved in this thing. It has to be a, like a relay race, not a individual race, you know. So therefore, uh, and governments are doing these solutions. Up, it has to be accountability from top down. It can't be that you hold the teacher accountable, but the, the ministers and the top are just unaccountable. Accountability flows. If the Minister for Education was held accountable for you know, greater awareness of road safety, believe me, it will get done. But if you hold one principal accountable in some district, and it is not going to trickle up. Accountability always trickles down. And so the top has to be held accountable 
We don't have to say. We say the government of India signed up to uh, this target 3.6. Uh, how are we doing? Find an RTI and find out how they, we are doing and why this is the case. Why are we not making so? We hold them accountable to the commitments that the governments have already made rather than give uh, new ideas. It should be explicit and unambiguous assignment of accountability. When we talk about we need to do this, we tend to think that, okay, this should be done, but it's not my responsibility. You know, we have to say, sir, you are responsible. If this doesn't happen, you are responsible. Everybody's responsibility is nobody's responsibility. You, Ministry of Transport, I mean, with great respect, I say the additional secretary didn't come here. She thinks there are many other important things to do. This is not the most important thing. So she's not feeling accountable that this is her job appropriate incentives. If there are no consequences, you can do all kinds of fancy stuff, but there are no consequences for good or bad behavior or performance, then that's not going to help. Effective integration with HR systems is not just that. It has to be all the way. People should be held accountable. Budget system should be integrated with it. There should be transparency. It should be all in the public domain. They are not dealing with nuclear secrets, are we? This is not a rocket or something that we are trying to fire. Everything should be in the public domain that these, this is the money being spent. These are the people who are spending. These were their objectives. This is what they have achieved. Let it be like the budget. It should be all up in there. Appropriate institutional arrangement. There should be well thought of arrangements. It can't be that some director, joint secretary uh, is monitoring additional secretary. And this has to be at a very high level um, to be done and somebody should be monitoring at the prime minister's office, Niti Aayog, or somewhere, where this should really be done and integrated with others. An effective communication strategy. I'm telling you, these are the, the nine or 12 habits of effective governments. And there should be a strong legal foundation. Sometimes, you know, just talking about it doesn't help. When you have a legal foundation, you can take people to courts, there can be some redress and some justice. And I think this has risen to a level where it needs to be legislated. If there can be right to education, right to road safety is also a public good of great importance, uh, whether even before um, Mrs. Cyrus um, left us, unfortunately. So as I said, I'm sorry I have the only limited time. This is the crux of some of the thoughts that I had. There's much more, and it's always not a wise idea to give professor unlimited time. Uh, Mr. Kapila was very wise in putting a, a very st stringent limit on me, and so I thank him. I thank the organizers. I thank you for your attention, and please uh, contact me. This, uh, this uh, PowerPoint will be shared with you at the end by the organizers. Thank you very much. Yeah, but it was a very lucid presentation full of knowledge which you have shared with all of us. We will certainly avail the uh, offer of getting more and more output from you in this young year, which needs a hooty from everyone. The next speaker uh, is Mr. Bala Subramanian. He is covering safety in school transport fleet and training of drivers of school fleet. An automobile engineer by education, Mr. N. Balasubram's career stint includes TBS Group and Ashok Leyland. He has had interest in learning and development in service and driver training, which he honed further through the Automotive Sector Skill Council. Here he was actively involved in training sector evaluation, curriculum validation, assessor evaluation, conduct, train, and retainer, creation of occupational standards in the capacity of a lead trainer, mapping Indian qualifications with Australia and UK towards the implementation of transitional standards of automotive job roles. <coughs> Currently, he is skilling consultant to various organizations and institutions. Some of his notable projects include uh, project ASAP Project Kerala for skilling high school students, guiding school projects successfully in the state of Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka, Punjab, and West Bengal. He has also successfully 
by mentored various institutions such as Polytechnics, Engineering College, and the AICT, UGC with skills development. Over to you, Mr. Bala Subramani. Thank you, Mr. Kapila and other audience. How to make it full screen? Is it the view? Can you view it in full screen? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. So now it is through. Okay, gentlemen, uh, good evening. Uh, in fact, uh, when Professor concluded, I <clears throat> thought of an incident which happened 15 years ago. The uh, QS auditor, external auditor, I was sitting in a driver training institute at Deep South, Namakal, and uh, that auditor asked me one question. How you, Bala, we have done so nicely, fine. All records are all fine. But how you measure the effectiveness of the training? Okay, that is one simple question he asked. Okay, you all know about the system audit, how difficult is that question? And uh, he was also went on to explain. So as far as the driver training is concerned, can you prove that after training, accidents have reduced? crashes have reduced, whether fuel consumption has improved, whether the driver behavior has improved to say, for example, a conductor who, is, who deals with the passenger, whether his behavior and temperament got improved. So all those things he was asking, actually. This happened 15 years ago, still it is green in my memory. Uh, have we uh, reduced road accidents? Have we reduced the incidents? Okay, so it is a question of a dynamic uh, world which we are all into it. Okay, and another thing, we are all drivers and road users in some way or other, whether it be it a two wheeler or a four wheeler or a pedestrian or a cyclist, we all are road users and abide by the road safety rules and regulations. So it is very, very important. My slides are a little bit technical here. I will just quickly run through because 10 minutes is a bit tough task for people like us, but still the rule is to go by the timeline. Okay. <clears throat> now, basically the DNA of the training driving is patience and courteous and never to show anger uh, while on uh, driver's seat. You, in fact, you will find most of the drivers outside uh, taking a cup of chai or having a smoke. But the time they sit on the wheel, uh, they were very, very, you know, uh, just like a jumbo jet uh, pilot, uh, they will be rushing through and all. Okay. So this patience and courteousness should be there always. And the judgment, anticipation, vigilant, we will go through it in detail. Uh, and then uh, the very, very important thing is avoid a distraction mentally and physically because as and when we start off our driving, things will come into our mind, uh, say something like that, uh, have we locked my uh, house properly or even payment of electricity bills, all those things, uh, whether we have switched off a gas stove. In fact, one such an incident happened to me also where my wife was just uh, telling me whether we have uh, switched off the stove and all. Okay, those days uh, where we don't have mobile phone like we do have now, uh, luckily we went to a booth and then uh, rang up to our neighbor, okay, who is staying downstairs. Uh, and uh, because we have given the key to them to just to physically uh, check physically whether the uh, gas stove is switched on properly. So this is the, when, when I am at the wheel, I, I should uh, ensure that I don't have the uh, distraction, okay, both mentally and physically. And the minute now we sit on the driving seat without the minding, uh, we take off uh, just like an aircraft, wherein we have to see our lights, number plates, 
cleanliness of windscreen okay then the tires leakages and underbody obstruction because particularly in areas of school and all where you may find the children at the back of the uh, vehicle or even sitting by the side of the wheel okay or in front of the vehicle also where the driver will not be able to see who is underneath our vehicle definitely we need to have a check around the vehicle uh, surroundings and vehicle check also and uh, no need to emphasize the importance of the seat belt uh, rear view mirror see i have seen many drivers adjusting all these things while driving it should not be done uh, during driving it should be done uh, before driving uh, and uh, you know i have seen people struggling to put the seat belt when they are on okay they already started the driving that is very very uh, thing that they need to avoid and the rear view mirror adjustment again it has to be done properly according to their height and uh, uh, their uh, uh, body okay seat adjustment and the lights are burning that they need to ensure see uh, one thing which we all uh, notice is the proper uh, speed and the lane selection and the management with the use of our steering and the indicator see i am uh, not alone on the road okay we, we need to uh, take uh, the other road users also into consideration and then we have to communicate to them uh, properly with the proper speed and the indicator and accordingly we have to uh, do the lane selection management and one thing you please observe it is there prevailing in all, all over indian cities okay where when they take a right turn or a left turn they don't keep the lane discipline okay you will find this almost 100% okay even um, uh, today also you just observe uh, right from uh, third lane they will come to the second and first and similarly from first to second and third like that okay and one more thing also when they want to take a right turn they uh, come from extreme left and then uh, come and uh, switch over the lanes and then do the right turn so these things are all very bad and uh, definitely should be avoided see uh, there are uh, two things here one is the tailgating where we run close to the uh, uh, the vehicle in front and we should also avoid uh, road hogging uh, going at a, a very slow speed which we are not supposed to as per the moving traffic okay these two things are really irritating for other uh, road users especially uh, tailgating is a very very uh, nuisance uh, habit where you know every uh, driver need to be uh, need to avoid see what happens is we have school children in the school buses and uh, where the sudden uh, braking in front of the uh, our vehicle okay uh, where in uh, the uh, vehicle in our uh, going in our front uh, stops uh, for some emergency or for some uh, underwear situation we will also be forced to do the hard braking uh, where in uh, we need to uh, keep in mind the uh, school children are in the in our bus see with the school children care need to be there at the time of uh, boarding the bus during the transit and stopping and parking at the proper designated place okay and in fact one video one snap wherein aglis ji was sharing that zebra crossing okay and again the habits abroad and here also okay whenever uh, that is pedestrians are supposed to cross only in the zebra crossing okay and at the same time whenever uh, they see pedestrian crossing in the, the zebra crossing point uh, the uh, driver need to slow down and wait for the person to uh, cross over okay so that is very very important here and the speed is very uh, need to be controlled and wherein uh, this simple graph shows you uh, when i am traveling at the speed of 40 60 80 100 and 110 how much distance am i am covering per second okay so you can very well imagine the distance we travel when we are at 40 when we are at 60 okay it is very very important that uh, whenever we take our eyes off the road that is very very uh, critical okay because we travel such a large distance of 11 meters in 40 kmph 
and 16 in 60 and not to say about 1800 110 and all okay it is quite a huge distance which we travel okay wherein in indian scenario you will find people with a pot of water just like that crossing the highway or even a animal staying on the highway nowhere you will be seeing from the median plants in between and then you will find this stray cattle it's very very uh, uh, dangerous situation uh, which when we don't control and again another important thing is as per the science more than 2 seconds when they keep their eyes off the road okay it takes time to recoup because after all it is brain which is doing the programming of what we see on road and then the more than 2 seconds it recoups and it takes more time to grasp the situation. This is very, very, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, very dangerous situation where you take your eyes off the road, especially when you uh, see a hoarding uh, with attractive uh, figures. Uh, and then uh, when you are, when you fiddle with your mobile, doing some texting and all, seeing the WhatsApp images and all. And when we see, very uh, simple thing is, we have to see and we have to be seen also, okay? That means we need to see the other vehicles and we should also ensure that our vehicle is seen by uh, other road users, okay? We need to have additional adequate gap, okay? Uh, uh, the uh, uh, two second rule and four second rule, we, we used to tell in uh, depth during our technical sessions, avoid uh, harsh braking, then uh, traffic light uh, changes, avoid a sudden stoppage and a sudden acceleration. See here, uh, the uh, usage of uh, indicators is very, very important, not at the 11th hour, okay, uh, wherein uh, we have to communicate to other people. And uh, we have to expect the unexpected. As uh, we all know, it is a very, very dynamic situation wherein uh, whatever I have practiced yesterday or last week or last month, I need to practice it today now at the moment okay it is not that you know i have stopped uh, uh, driving well uh, uh, yesterday and then today i will be free and all okay it is not like that we need to have a uh, very very uh, a safety in our mind while overtaking with a safe distance and speed and uh, repositioning and all it is very very important and one more thing very essential nowadays is when we have a culvert or a electric post or a constriction in the uh, road, we need to see that uh, when we are having another road user, maybe a bike, maybe a, a cycle, or maybe an oncoming vehicle, right? We need to avoid this uh, three in one situation. We need to cross that culvert entry point or that post before the other road users also crossing that same point. Okay, so we have to be really careful. Accordingly, we have to use our uh, speed, right? So uh, people use a horn very, very uh, lavishly, right? So uh, all of us would have had experience about the horses driving or as a passenger, wherein uh, you would not have heard about horn sound at all, okay? And uh, reversing and parking, see, uh, the children uh, who are in the school, okay, they will be playing, uh, they will be standing, and then uh, they will be uh, even uh, sitting also behind the vehicle in the shade and all, okay, we don't know. So we have to really uh, look at and then uh, be aware of the blind spot and the properly alignment and then <clears throat> ensuring sufficient uh, gap. Okay. In fact, uh, you would have seen in uh, uh, pa parking and all where you will not be able to open the door and all. Okay. You should ensure that when you park the vehicle, you see that you are able to open the door, your door, as well as the other vehicle which is parked on the side, where they also uh, can open the door and then come out of it without any uh, difficulty. It is just a, a quick uh, information about the vision, uh, wherein we have various types of vision, central vision, peripheral vision, frugal, uh, fringe vision and all, wherein you will see the uh, blind spots are uh, marked in the slightly pinkish uh, slay, uh, shade, okay, where you see the uh, blind spot here, okay, and uh, here, and uh, here, that is in between the uh, green shade and the purple shade where you have the array of uh, uh, blind spot on both sides because 
rear view uh, with a combination of uh, outside mirror will have definitely uh, some blind spots which you need to be aware and when you use a mobile phone or when you take your eyes off the uh, road now what happens is almost 180 degrees we have every uh, one we have unless and until they have uh, some specific issue and this vision is reduced to as low as 40 degrees scientific results are there uh, wherein uh, your vision is restricted to 40 degrees from 180 okay so this is what is uh, called uh, tunnel vision also wherein your uh, danger uh, uh, situation is uh, prevailing with the lack of uh, sight on the other uh, areas in front of your vehicle okay you won't be able to visualize the people who are crossing the road this is very, very important. And here, uh, when I talk about vision, the other things uh, matters like uh, uh, color blindness, okay, and uh, uh, peripheral uh, vision. Uh, some people will have peripheral vision deficiency, uh, wherein uh, right and left also varies. We have seen uh, people with the varied uh, uh, vision. And one more thing, uh, depth perception, night vision, and color blindness. In fact, one driver with uh, some 12 years of experience, uh, we landed up uh, uh, testing him uh, during the uh, road safety week, uh, wherein we could able to see the color blindness. And when I asked him, I specifically uh, interviewed him, he could not be able to distinguish yellow and uh, green. Okay. So this is very, very important. Okay. On road behavior. See, uh, Again, uh, as I was telling you earlier, uh, the minute they sit on the driving seat, they are very uh, no, aggressive, uh, not showing patient, okay, swearing the other road users and all. This is very, very uh, uh, bad practices where they need to be not aggressive. And then don't get uh, distracted, okay, distraction uh, in many ways, okay, physically, emotionally also, okay, and be courteous with other uh, road users. Cooperative, okay. See, this defensive driving helps a lot. In fact, uh, the other day when I was driving with my son, he was a little bit uh, uh, accelerator uh, aggressive, okay, or you know, trigger happy like that. No, accelerator happy guy. So I just uh, told him, you be uh, show patience, okay. When you leave uh, another guy who is forcing you on the right side, now you don't lose anything, right? You just allow him to go, okay. So don't be uh, aggressive, okay, and uh, be friendly with the uh, other road users and look, you are not alone in the road and you are also a co-user of the road, okay. So you are not the whole and sole property of the road, right. You have to share the road with the uh, other road users. That is very, very important. And here, horn is extensively used so rashly. I remember Bombay as a rule of uh, punishing people uh, using horn. Okay. I wish uh, everywhere that rule should come. And not only usage of horn, usage of high decibel horns also. Okay. You will see two extra Bosch horns uh, fitted on the front bumper. Right. So, uh, which uh, by any way, more than uh, double the noise norms. Uh, initiated by uh, CMVR, uh, by ARI and all. Okay. Again, indicators. See, indicators, again, it is often abused uh, for uh, giving overtaking sign to the other road user. Actually, nowhere in the CMVR, it permits you to put a right indicator to allow the people. Similarly, left indicator, right? And then they uh, flick the headlights and then barge into the area. The rule is, when you have the way, you please go. When you don't have the way, be patient, reduce the speed, and then uh, tow below behind the vehicle, uh, I mean, in the vehicle in front of you, and then follow the rules of the uh, traffic, okay? As the traffic moves, you also move along with the traffic, okay? Assault warning light should be used whenever it is required, okay? Not uh, just like that, uh, uh, any uh, whims and fancies of the driver you should not use. You should use only in a case of emergency situation where you are not able to drive faster, where you have a very specific problem, where the vehicle is on tow. So many things are there when you uh, have that. Okay, That is very, very uh, important. Where the gadgets are given, the controls are given. It is only for uh, supporting the driver, ensuring the safety, not to abuse.
and uh, you have to uh, really do the anticipation and judgment that is a essential good qualities of your driver you must remember you have school children in the bus uh, wherein uh, they are supposed to be uh, safe during transit also in fact uh, my father who taught me driving uh, i mean uh, way back uh, some 30 35 years ago he used to say that a good driver uh, makes a passenger sleep okay a bad driver will not allow the passenger to go for sleep okay so we need to uh, do uh, uh, how to negotiate the hump properly okay how to take care of the speed breakers it may not be of uh, irc standards but still you have to take care of the speed breaker and then go accordingly again unmanned level crossing i think almost uh, we are done with the unmanned level crossing but still you have to do properly there is a separate uh, uh, content for uh, crossing the uh, such places okay and again school hospital market places we need to go by the uh, uh, gu- guidelines as per the road signs and the safety and comfort to the occupants very very uh, important and uh, in fact we did a lot of study on the awareness of the road signs uh, i hope higher of also is doing it uh, when aglesh ji is also doing the content the awareness on road signs traffic signals is very very uh, limited uh, uh, as uh, we have okay as we have uh, uh, conducted a few quiz on the road signs especially the sequence of red amber and green okay in fact more than 75% have got it wrong okay so there that need to be uh, clearly uh, driven to them road markings what is a road marking is for okay what it indicates what should i do okay then uh, respect to road usage uh, seat belts you all know very well uh, in uh, big cities it is a very common practice wherein uh, they will have a small buckle extra buckle and they will put it in the seat belt and then uh, they will uh, uh, go away with that uh, telltale signs and the alarm and all okay it is not for that actually it is for the uh, safety and mobile phone is strictly prohibited as i told you when you take your eyes off okay it brain takes time to recoup and again you have the visuals in front of you on the road okay so very simple thing when you do driving you have to do only driving nothing but driving let us make our roads safer okay i will be happy uh, to take some uh, technical questions at the end of this uh, seminar i once again thank you aglesh ji and irf for giving this opportunity to interact with you all thank you gentlemen uh, thank you mr bala subramaniam uh, we now come to the last uh, uh, topic of this webinar safety for school buses using rfid technology uh, this will be covered by dr sarkar uh, since we have run out of time i would request you not to take more than 15 minutes uh, and close it so that at least Well, although we have finished the time for panel discussion among yourselves, we will then move to the question answer session, which I would like to reduce. Uh, Professor Sarkar is presently engaged in teaching and research and consulting work in the areas of transport engineering, intelligent transport planning, and road safety. Presently, is the convener of Intelligent Transport System Committee as well as an active member of IRC. DIS IRF and ISO is presently serving as technical expert committee of national industrial corridor development corporation as well as contributing as an important member in the bureau of indian standards and international organization for standardization in the intelligent transport system committee he is also vice president of institute of urban transport india he has contributed several research and technical papers in national and international conferences he has won number of awards i would request professor sarkar to now take over and give his presentation thank you uh thank you mr kapilat 
for giving me an opportunity to speak at this forum. Uh, should I share my slides? Yeah, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as you said very rightly, because we have, uh, we have lost a lot of time, so we have only 15 minutes to uh, have to, uh, I'll try my level best to uh, summarize my uh, presentation that is quite a very important topic on safety for school buses using RFID technology. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, this uh, safety of school buses uh, I would like to say that this uh, initiative to work on these particular areas of concerns was taken up at BIS uh, ITS committee, where I'm a, one of the active member. And uh, as a team, we have been working on uh, evolving uh, standards and specification in case these systems is introduced uh, at various schools in India. Keeping in mind, uh, I just uh, try to put the things in a manner so that it is understandable uh, because I did not go into the detail of specification and standards which has already been evolved. I just like to say what has been the contents of the school bus uh, buses using the RFID technology. As you can see, when uh, school uh, buses are uh, seen standing at the uh, bus stop at the school bus stops and when they go to the various uh, bus stops to pick up and alight the children as well as ultimately go to the schools there are a number of activities are performed sometimes what happens students step into the bus and then students step, step into the wrong bus students being absent in the bus students have left the bus students have left the bus in the wrong wrong stations, students being left behind in the bus. So there are a number of issues which are concerned to the not only parents, but also the, uh, the students authority. So now let me see, uh, keeping this in view, uh, we have tried to uh, formulate objectives saying that it will facilitate the movement of school bus children during their boarding and alighting to and from the school bus in a secure and safer way. And that is one of the major objectives. And of course, as I said, to develop appropriate standards and specification of BIS uh, for safety of school bus, including boarding and alighting of students and tracking and monitoring of the school, school bus. Now, this slide shows that, uh, don't even talk about the ch children from this slide, it says, that more than 16,000 school children uh, uh, has lo have lost their lives uh, in each year, right, right from 2017, 2021, and more than that. So this is one of the very, very serious concerns. Students are losing lives. If you look at the, the number of students are uh, losing lives with, in, in front of the school buildings and college premises, even that number is, goes up more than 30,000 or so, right from 2017 to 2021. So this uh, is a matter, uh, it's a matter to be addressed properly. Now we have the technology in hand, so how to do it? So there have been a lot of research carried out in these areas. So let me just tell you the concept, how the school bus RFID system should work. The, the smart RFID tag is a, which is uh, uh, provided to the students embedded into the school ID cards and specific to each child. So that means when they come at the school bus, uh, the bus stand uh, from the in the residential area or so, so they are wait for the bus. As soon as the bus comes, the bus is uh, provided with the bus reader. You need it is combination of uh, uh, glo uh, mm, uh, GSM, uh, Global uh, Mobile Systems, the GPRS, the General uh, Package Radio Service, GPS, Global Positioning Systems, RFID and Camera. Camera is an optional. 
So these are the things provided in, along with the reader. And when the students get into the bus, immediately their data is captured by the reader to the antenna. And the reader is coupled with uh, microcontroller, which process the data. Ultimately, this data goes to the, uh, through internet using GPRS and GSM. And finally, it goes to the central servers. And because of the data being processed to the microcontrollers and the data, which also can be transmitted back to the parents' mobile app. So any point, point of time, parents can monitor the movement of their words. And also similarly, the central server also goes to uh, where the data is stored. And from there, it also goes to the command center where uh, institutes can, or can monitor that what is the present status of the particular uh, students. And finally, when the students come to the schools, they are, they have a uh, gate uh, readers, and the, they also readers are placed under the gate, and school, schools, uh, the, the details of the movements of the schools entering and leaving the schools can be recorded, and that also can be processed and goes back to the uh, your uh, uh, to, uh, to this GPRS and GSM systems, and also then gets linked to the central server at, and also its command center. This is a, basically the way it works. And uh, we also have seen that uh, there are number of information uh, layers available. Uh, and this is a communication architectures, information uh, like that, uh, your bus controllers, which is basically take care of RFID, antenna, GPS, G GPRS. And then you have uh, next layer, GPS, uh, GSM, GPRS. Then you have uh, the school servers. Then you have web browsers. And also that gets into the mobile app. System architecture basically have backend backend systems installed uh, uh, in the school uh, the in bus you have a bus monitoring and tracking systems installed in each school bus and tracking units are basically uh, uh, carried by each student and staff which shall be tracked by the systems and remote monitoring software also is available to ultimately to analyze the data and process the data and practically the, the dissemination of information takes place through the software. And this is a, a simple under, uh, as, as simply shown how the things work. You have, a, you have the data getting uh, recorded uh, to, uh, from the students and getting to the GPS model, GSA model, and then going to, uh, and going to the um, uh, microcontrollers and also the readers. Because you see, basically, uh, the way it works, it works at the in the bus as well as it works at the schools is uh, at the school, from the school gate also. And uh, so, let me show that this is a complete understanding which I have told you. The one as student gets into with a tag, you can see the color. It uh, the electromagnetic waves generated from the tag is anticipated by the antenna. This goes to the reader. Reader actually sends the data to the microcontrollers, which computes the data. And then finally, is linked to the, uh, the, the controller and then moves on to the, through internet, finally go to the school server. So this is some kind of experimental setup of the reader uh, interface to the microcontrollers. This is a, a place of uh, bus unit architectures. Bus unit architecture consists of RFID tag, RFID reader, LCD, GPRA, GSM, modem, microcontroller, GPS, keyboard, and ultrasonic sensors. This is used practically if the if, if alarm is generated or because of some emergency, it could be prompted to this uh, ultrasonic sensors. Similarly, the same kind of things are seen also installed at the school level uh, tag reader modem uh, and other necessary sensors 
Uh, I don't like to go into the detail about the functionalities. The functionality means whatever I said, this has been put into uh, step by step in order to in order to allow the data to be uh, processed properly right from the uh, students entering into the bus, and then uh, ultimately uh, the, the, the time the duration which they are staying in the bus and ultimately alighting at the at the school uh, at the schools. So all the things are getting recorded. And when you talk about the processing, for example, uh, as I say, once all children are boarded, the driver verifies the display count, display count with the head count. Driver has the flexibility to count the head count as well as can see what is the number being displayed, how many students have arrived. And when the bus leaves the school, it is tracked by a GPS and position to send out the send over the GSM and GPRS network to school server. So these are the number of steps also it get hooked to the mobile app. So I don't like to go into the details. So next comes there are because we don't develop the algorithms. We have seen the business rules because only that a child can be only on the bus. A child has only, has only one, uh, one or many relatives. A relative may have many children registered at the schools. So these are the number of things business tools have been developed so that there is no confusion. This is the student tracking module. If anything goes wrong, alert is already in build, which triggered in order to make sure that something has gone wrong. And accordingly, the message has go, go, not only goes to the server and ultimately goes to the uh, student's authority to take necessary actions. So number of modules are available at the uh, bus uh, end, the students tracking module, control module, school ad administration module, end users module. I will not go into the detail. Again, you can see some kind of uh, snapshot when school children is being tracked, their, na their name, number, uh, the identity, identity card, name of the person whom the, with whom the ch children is, a uh, child is involved. All the details have been shown in the school children tracking. Next, if anybody wants to be added into the system, this also can be added. This is a GSM modem, function of GSM modem. Uh, again, also uh, uh, communication, communication between taken, taken place between the two modems at the bus end as well as the school end. And you can see finally, overall architectures, the school, the data received at the school safety uh, backend server is related with the real-time tracking, geofencing, reports, alert management. Ultimately, this number of in outputs are delivered with respect to mobile uh, portals, application, web, web page, and finally, end users are parents, teachers, schools, authorities, etc. So similarly, we have, I don't like to go because we have uh, uh, short of time. Similarly, we have number of modules already built at the school uh, smart gaze for RFID tracking module, bus monitoring module, over the air module protocol, and machine to machine module and local, uh, local database. So all these things are available. They need to be uh, designed with softwares. And uh, this is also based on the data. We can also generate web-based application. And this is the total hardware, which is basically take, take into account Machine to machine communication protocol, RFID tracking module, uh, gateway, bus monitoring module. Finally, they all linked to it uh, GSM, uh, GPS, along with antenna, school bus, controller, uh, 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 your uh, uh, CAN CAN, which is basically controls the, all the functioning of the, uh, the bus. Uh, the, from the information coming, received input, output, that this is a uh, control area network and then RFID reader and antenna. So this is a, because this requires so many things, so many same sensors to be, uh, to be, which need to be integrated and their softwares need to be built. This is an experimental setup. This has been performed at many universities being implemented. Finally, as I find, this is going to be a very successful project now I think that I've come to the last point of the slides. Conclusion is that RFID tracking if technology, if it is used properly and it has been seen uh, with a 100% success, this has been working 
uh, with all uh, 100 uh, with all success in many parts of the countries so this can be a practical options for monitoring tracking the children's safety during their trips to and from uh, from schools on school buses with that i conclude hopefully i have maintained uh, around 15 minutes thank you thank you professor sarkar for maintaining the time uh, we will now come to the question answer uh, session. The first question has been raised by Aid India for Mankind, someone from that organization. And the question is, can we request government to encourage and reward good Samaritan habit, a joint intervention needed to implement this habit? Uh, would uh, you yeah, I would like to answer, answer it. this? Hari? I will like to answer this question if you permit. No, you answer it a bit, and then we should have also the ministries of response as director who is available here. First, you can respond. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, already there is a law. Uh, probably uh, uh, he asked a good question and very relevant uh, for the viewers. But this law is already there, a good Samaritan law, which uh, um, protects the uh, by bystander or any third person uh, uh, rendering help to the uh, accident victim taking to the hospital. In fact, it uh, goes a further ahead uh, with the recent amendment that it can they can be also facilitated. They should be awarded. They should be given social recognition as well. So he is not that. talking about good Samaritan law being in existence. He is talking about regard to a good Samaritan. Yeah, exactly. That this is the ministry has put on their website that please recommend such people and they will be awarded that's what i'm trying to say it's a they had already gone extend further to award them is there a policy on that uh, reward uh, uh, director sir is there a policy on reward that ministry has issued i think he he, he... he lost him uh, it seems we have lost him. I think we have left. Okay. So we will take up that later. Uh, we have no answer to that particular part as yet. Uh, along with road safety habits, this is again by the same organization. Along with the road safety habits, we need to teach emergency management of RTA victims through workshops in schools, colleges, and offices. It should be made mandatory to attend such activity. You see, uh, as far as road safety, uh, as far as the trauma care uh, training is concerned, that is being imparted uh, by uh, the by IRF and many other organizations in various to various bystanders. We are also undertaking it in certain schools and colleges, but it make it a. Uh, make it compulsory, to make it mandatory to attend such activities would something be very good. I like the suggestion. We'll try and see how it can be implemented. Third question is by Mr. Dheeraj Minotra. Sir, should driving not be a privilege? There is a need to seize license of unruly drivers but we never hear of anyone losing their license. <laughs> it's, a it's a good question. And I will explain to you, Dheeraj, what we have done in this regard. We have recommended to the government to link the passports with your Aadhaar card. Today, what has happened is uh, some irritant, irritant drivers have got number of licenses and they don't care if one license is taken away by the government. So once we link the, the licenses with the Aadhaar card, the sanity will come. And further to that, sir, uh, government has uh, already the policy is coming up. If he has been uh, ch challenged for four times, probably fifth time the license will be suspended for some period. That's right. My suggestion is that more than theoretical knowledge this is from Mr. Ram Shuruk Puri. My suggestion is that 
more than theoretical knowledge of safety aspects, practical knowledge is more important. We may introduce vehicle driving schools as part of school and college workshops. This will act as skill development and self witness enthusiastic response from 11th and 12th standard students. Would you like to respond, Akhilesh? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I mean, the, the recent uh, policy, which is uh, a draft policy in the public domain, uh, where he can also give comment that is uh, government has come out with the proposal that the driving uh, train drivers training will be fully automated and it will be comprising of three parts. First part will be uh, 19 hours of theoretical training, online videos and other things, then two hours on simulator and eight hours IoT driven um, uh, training, which will be practical. So these are 29 hours are going to be mandatory. And once it is done, then the license will be issued. So if that comes in picture, probably what he is asking will be taken care. It, uh, it will come from theoretical to actual based on his performance monitored by technology. This is from Pratik Suryavanshi. Though traffic department always charges heavy penalty to the people who disobey, who disobey the traffic rules, still there is no any improvement observed in the society as of now towards following the traffic rules, even though educating them road traffic rules basically depends upon the commuter and traveler's own mind to obey the traffic rules positively. Sir, uh, I mean, if you permit, I can reply this question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so he has a very good question, sir. I mean, uh, in spite of the stringent rule and so, and so many things, why road safety uh, enforcement is lacking and why no improvement is taking place? Uh, so uh, this got two aspects. One, I will not say that our enforcement is lacking. Yes, that may be some reasons technology, ITS can improve it better. But by the time it happens, uh, we uh, did, uh, I mean, uh, IRF is also, uh, I mean, uh, we are doing that, uh, save something where we can incentivize, we give a positive note uh, that you, if you drive good, you are scoring some points, those points are monetized, they are leading to you uh, certain benefits in insurance, certain benefits at wayside amenities, workshop, <clears throat> this is a positive. So these can change behavior faster than the fear of being caught and punished. Uh, which people we have seen during these things that the moment that people cross the camera influence uh, limit, they immediately uh, over speed back to the normal. Whereas if he is being tracked and his points are being scored for good driving, uh, probably he, he, that will incentivize him but, uh, and change his behavior to better men. So soft enforcement should also be the need of our for uh, till time when we have the change in habit and good enforcement mechanism in place. Uh, Would anyone like to add? Uh, uh, my, uh, Mr. Kapil, I also like to add. Yes. Uh, Akhilesh was mentioning soft enforcement. I am. I do not agree with him totally, because nowadays in India, I find education enforcement has to go in hand in hand strongly, not in a softer manner. Because we have we, that kind of culture has already been emerged in uh, European and Western countries, I know that the driver is very conscious in case they do anything wrong, they are concerned that they have to pay 65 pounds, five pounds or very $500 uh, pounds at any moment of time. That is a, that may be the bread and butter of that particular day. So I think that so, not a uh, soft enforcement, it has to be supported with strong enforcement. Then there's no denial, sir. Uh, enforcement has to be strict. But uh, have you seen the command center practically? In command center, we get a lot of uh, thousands of violations every day, but no policeman looks at it because he don't have time. And the- uh, oh, Just a minute, Akhilesh. Yes. What to get in the command center, we can send each alarm to those people. Hmm. So it, is, it is not that you cannot send an each alarm. We don't need a policeman to alarm anybody at the site itself. We have to have a system in place there, your car number is automatically uh, taken while you are driving on the road. And if you are in, if you are committing a mistake on the road, that gets recorded, and you uh, have to pay fine for that mistake. If you are changing lane at the wrong place, you are supposed to pay a fine. 
If you are over speeding, you have to pay a fine. And all that gets uh, on the computer system, uh, which can be easily tracked and uh, accordingly each allowance can be sent. So we, we need to have uh, I, the, the usage of information technology to the optimum as required in the nation. I know it is a tall order, but we have to gradually get there. We have to graduate there. What we have to see is that we lose uh, 2.9 lakh crores every year. So why not spend one, yeah. one 2.9 or one year on the systems and then save that 2.9 and probably reduce it to 50 lakhs? Fully agree with you, sir. Um, um, I mean, there is a uh, no two opinion. What you said is absolutely perfect and that should be. But what I was just trying to highlight, uh, that implementation reaching to that level may take few years. Number one, second, the enforcement through the chalan, the recovery is very less, sir. In Delhi, it is only 13% each chalans are paid. So considering that that ecosystem goes to that maturity level, at least these can be helpful things. That was my opinion. Anybody and very else for any other remark? Mr. Gulshan Sharma, three basic key to control road accidents. What are the three factors most important to control road accidents? So the best is uh, the most important uh, is the engineering enforcement and uh, emergency care. I'm uh, oh, sorry, education. This. I think uh, you have given five, so how can we uh, summarize <laughs> the three? Uh, all five are equally important. We can't uh, leave any of these. So I think... <laughs> yes, I think, Gulshan Charma sir, you have to realize that all the five are equally important and simply the road safety will not come. Uh, I explained that in my keynote address, that all the five E's are important and have to be simultaneously done. Anything done piecemeal will not help. Absolutely. The next question is again from Aid for Mankind. Recently, who was traveling to Rajasthan and I witnessed loads of freight cattle on the National Highway, which are the main cause of fatal accidents. Why the authorities are not being penalized or punished for such negligence? Accountability should be set at each level. Uh, we couldn't agree more. You heard the accountability part so lucidly brought out by Mr. Prajapati Trivedi that accountability at all levels is a must. And yes. we fully agree with you that accountability should be set at each level so that we can make our roads safer. The next question is by Mr. Sanjay Kumar. As per feedback from school bus drivers of whom we NetFed conducted training, they are being paid very low. This is a serious concern as they resort to other jobs during their idle time and accordingly may result in reduced responsibility for driving. What would be the policy decision in this regard? It's a difficult question, uh, Sanjay, because uh, the policy on salaries is something which is uh, uh, difficult to intervene with because if somebody chooses a profession, he knows that this is what he is likely to get. But I, I do agree with you that we should try to see if we can raise the basic salaries of these people to make them to get better people, more responsible people for this job. Uh, Mr. Kapila, I'd just like to add one point. Sure. I, I have seen in abroad a, a driver also gets a more or less equal amount of salary as engineers gets. I was asking a driver, how much do you get per annum? He says $50,000. Even an engineer who is working somewhere, he gets also $40,000, $50,000 per year. So my question is, even, why the... The, the salaries are low here. This is, this is true for the policemen. This is true for the uh, drivers. So, you know, all these basic categories... In the who are supposed to be looking after road safety, unfortunately, are getting are very low paid people. So, so we, have, we need to evolve the policy in this regard, sir. Uh, so, here that is what I was trying to link it, sir. The safe driving score that gives the insight into the driving and that will categorize the drivers, the drivers with 
higher scores can ultimately demand uh, they can be termed as a safe driver and then they can say i, I charge more no, we can sure. put, put the slab of their salary first higher yeah. than the other yes yes yeah. And the uh, parents will love that the driver with very high score is driving, taking their children to school. And if the driver asks, I will charge 5,000 more for driving school bus, people will love to pay. Oh, that's fine. That is what the safe driving score I was trying to refer to. It's like civil score. Yeah. And summing up, I would like to thank each one of you for your presentations today. And uh, I would like to sum up on the note that we all need to do whatever is possible in our domain to bring in road safety into focus and reduce road accidents and fatalities in India and the world at large. Everything humanly possible, we must endeavor to do, which is within our control, which is not within our control, let us at least propagate that road safety is an inescapable necessity and we must all contribute in that direction amongst other things which SDG provides for. On that note, I'd like to close this webinar this evening. Again, thanking you all for your participation. Thank you, Jai Hind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, before we end, we'd just like to thank the sponsors for this program, uh, Goar Construction, Dilip Bilkon Limited, and Maruti Suzuki. And I would also like to thank the supporting organization, World Economic Forum. Thank you very much.